wind and fire, storms and rain, clouds and an eclipse, plus some hail and spinny spinny doom doom to mix it all in. Let's talk about it in what is going to be a very busy Texas Weather Roundup on this Friday. Good morning, it's Friday, the 5th of April, 2024. I'm Texas Storm Chasers Boldy and Chief David Reimer. I'm very sorry about y'all not getting to see my beautiful head for two whole days. I guarantee you, neither was intentional. Yesterday's was due to a technical snafu. Specifically, I think it had something to do with a power outage a couple days ago, but uh, I had to go and bury myself into some audio codecs to figure out why I was sounding like a smurf. And that was not an enjoyable task, so my apologies with luck. And, well, a bit of skill, since I made sure the audio was working before I recorded this. We're back in business. That's good, because we're getting busy. Enjoy the quiet weather for when it ends here in about three days, at least in terms of precipitation. We're going to be not getting much sleep, and it's going to be busy. Let's just take a look at what we've got today, tonight, to Saturday with the high res Rapid Refresh model. Cloud cover-wise, we are going to have some upper-level clouds streaming across the state today, but no precipitations expected. Uh, maybe a couple of sprinkles in the panhandle, but you can see tomorrow morning, cloud southeastern half of the state, northwestern half, pretty nice. It's going to be a pretty beautiful day. Then, as we get into late Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, broken line of thunderstorms from an area low pressure up in Nebraska. That's going to arc south, southeast across Kansas, Oklahoma. Can't totally rule out a thunderstorm north of Highway 380 in Texoma in northeast Texas, the Arklatex. I mean, 380 to 30. Let's let's be specific since 380 ends in Greenville. Uh, late Saturday evening, early Sunday morning, if we get a storm south of Red River, it could have some hail with it. But the probabilities are not high. As we continue past precipitation, let's look at what's going to be the real impact maker this weekend. Wind. Here, I'm going to start this over. I'm not waiting for this to play out. Mm -mm, no siree, Bob. Here we go. Here he's... Did I update this? That's not even the right file. Well, at least some things hold true in the fact that I can't get some things right even though I updated this file. Anyway, here we go. It's going to be windy today. Western half of the state especially. We could have wind gusting over 35 to 40 miles an hour. Winds generally out of the southeast. Tonight is going to get really windy. Winds gusting up to 50 miles an hour in parts of the Panhandle, West Texas, Permian Basin, Big Country, Concho Valley. Tomorrow, uh, south-southeast winds. Eastern half of the state remaining gusty. We'll have a dry line push from west to east, bringing very dry conditions. Westerly wind, or west, yeah, westerly winds. Winds gusting up to 55 to 60 miles an hour, perhaps, in the panhandle of West Texas tomorrow afternoon. So go into Sunday. Things are going to get a little quieter. Sunday we'll have less wind, uh, but it'll begin switching out the southeast. So again, today and Saturday going to be quite windy across the state of Texas. You might be asking, well, if we're going to have a dry line, what are we doing about fires? You might have a bit of a problem. Uh, the Texas A&M Forest Service forecasting very high to extreme fire danger today, tomorrow, and especially Sunday, but tomorrow too is going to be a problem. The Panhandle, West Texas, Northwest Texas, the Big Country, the Concho Valley, the Edwards Plateau, the Big Bend, the Permian Basin, the Trans-Pecos, the Guadalupe and Davis Mountains, the borderland of far west Texas. Specifically, there are concerns tomorrow we could be looking at a pretty nasty fire weather setup in the Panhandle in west Texas, especially if things come together right. It could be one of the more potent days we've seen since our fire weather outbreak at the end of February. And then Sunday, well, Sunday, <laughs> uh, even with lower wind, it's going to be very dry across most of the state, at least the western half. So, yeah, we're going to have issues, especially after today and tomorrow are very dry, very favorable for drying out surface fuels ahead of, well, tomorrow and Sunday. What about the eclipse? Well, I hate to break it to you, but that's a pretty easy part of this forecast. Uh, it's not going to happen here, at least seeing it. Uh, very high probabilities we're going to have upper level clouds and a moderate chance at least of low level clouds that would all but completely obscure the eclipse minus where it gets darker for a few hours late morning through the early afternoon across the state of Texas. Uh, at this point, you want to see it, you're probably going to have to go to the boot heel of Missouri, southern Illinois, southwestern Indiana, or portions of upstate New, well, yeah, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, 
portions of New England. Or, that's not Quebec. Yeah, that, that might be Quebec, actually. Southern Quebec. Um, it may not be Quebec, but this is not Canada. So, I'll chastise myself later and look at a map. So, uh, it is not going to happen. So, that's the easy part of this forecast. Unfortunately, what happened shortly after the eclipse through at least the first half of the week is going to be more problematic in the impact department for weather. Let's get into it. Uh, shortly after the eclipse, the potential for severe thunderstorms looks to increase across portions of the big country, northwest Texas, the Concho Valley, the Hill Country, central Texas, the Brazos Valley, north Texas, Texoma, the Arklatex, northeast Texas, and east Texas. This is going to be due to a northward moving warm front, which is going to be one element that's going to be causing all our cloud cover in combination with the arrival of an upper level storm system that'll have a 120 to 150 mile per hour jet streak overhead that combined with that warm front moving north bringing tropical moisture surface dew points in the upper 60s to 70s will result in what should be a unstable air mass we're going to have a surface low pressure developing across portions of well, northwest texas into western Oklahoma, that will enhance low-level wind shear. Combined with the upper-level jet streak, the warm front, which is another f focal point for thunderstorm development and can enhance some low-level wind shear, uh, the stage is set for what could be a problematic Monday evening, Monday night, and Tuesday morning. The key factor here I want to point out is this threat will be nocturnal, or at least continue through Monday night into Tuesday. The risk for all modes of severe weather, including the potential for at least a few tornadoes, given the increasing indications of low-level wind shear being stronger. So, even though we're all focused on the eclipse, I want to point out we're going to have severe weather issues begin not long after the eclipse concludes through Monday night and Tuesday. But guess what? The risk continues into Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, and Wednesday morning across Texoma, North Texas, Central Texas, the Hill Country, the Brazos Valley, the Coastal Plains, Southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle around Beaumont, all of East Texas, all of Northeast Texas, and the Arklatex. The potential for heavy rain scattered to numerous thunderstorms, some of which will be severe with the potential for hail, strong wind gusts, uh, probably some tornado threat continuing, the exact level of which will have to be determined as we get closer, but again, that's going to be the Tuesday issue. But wait, there's more. The risk continues into Wednesday across northeast Texas, the Arklatex, east Texas, the eastern Brazos Valley, southeast Texas, and the Golden Triangle. Although I want to point out, thunderstorms with rain probably still going to be going on further west as well. So, Monday afternoon, Monday night, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday afternoon, maybe Wednesday evening. We'll see if it goes on longer than that. The threat for thunderstorms, some of which could be severe, producing hail, damaging winds, at least some tornado threat. We'll get more specific on the individual threat levels and areas of higher severe weather potential as we get closer to early next week. But uh, it's been a while since we've had a multi-day severe weather event in the cards. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to April. Mama Nature wants to play next week, apparently with an eclipse, with thunderstorms, the heavy rainfall potential, and all that nonsense. Speaking of heavy rain, here's the forecast rain totals through 7 a.m. Wednesday. Keeping in mind, we're going to have more storms on Wednesday and probably Thursday. The potential for at least a quarter inch of rainfall extending pretty much, well, all the West Texas, excuse me, all the Texas Panhandle, West Texas, Northwest Texas, the Big Country, the Concho Valley, the Edwards Plateau, the Hill Country, South Central Texas, Central Texas, North Texas, Texoma, Northeast Texas, the Arklatex, East Texas, the Brazos Valley, Southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle, the Coastal Plains, the Victoria Crossroads. 
at least a quarter inch of rain. The potential for at least one to three inches of rain across Texoma, North Texas, the Brazos Valley, Southeast Texas, the Golden Triangle, East Texas, Northeast Texas, the Arklatex. Some locations there could see over six inches of rain by the time we get to Wednesday. Needless to say, that would also, in addition to threat for severe storms, introduce hydrometeorological concerns. That's the fancy Friday nerdy way of me saying flooding. We're going to see rises on creeks, streams, rivers, lakes, and the potential for flash flooding with impacts, you know, street flooding, all that. Next week's going to be busy. I think it's becoming pretty abundant. We're going to be dealing with that, and that's going to be because we're going to have an upper-level storm system and an upper-level pattern set up that will generally result in systems getting trapped or being very slow moving which is why they're going to stick around for a couple of days and why we're going to be under the proverbial threat i can't say the uh, three-letter word i would have used because some sort of youtube demonetization would probably occur but uh as you can see here looking at this i'll just let this play out once then i'll verbally talk through it we're going to have scattered showers and thunderstorms monday afternoon through probably at least wednesday afternoon across parts of the eastern half of texas with even some rain chances across the panhandle west texas northwest texas the big country as well so again i mean you can see this uh, we're going to have multiple rounds of beneficial to excessive rainfall next week. Now, you might notice I'm not trying to get specific about storm modes, trying to say where the highest corridors of severe weather potential are at this point, but we're still too far out. We're four, five, six days out from this, but the overall weather pattern, the way it looks now and weather models are indicating, is synoptically evident, as in, in the past, setups that look like this have tended to produce severe weather and at times impactful severe weather. And the way it looks, uh, we're going to be under this regime for at least three days. So that means we're going to have three days of severe weather potential at least, heavy rainfall potential, opportunities for showers and thunderstorms. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to be dealing with severe weather constantly for 72 hours or we're going to have thunderstorms in every location of the state for 72 hours. No, we're going to have lulls here and there. And the specific severe weather threats each subsequent day or event or time frame will probably have some dependency on what has already happened since that'll set up boundaries, that'll set up um, areas of more destabilization. But one element I want to point out with this is we're going to have a very good fetch of moisture coming in off the Gulf of Mexico and that low level flow from the Gulf of Mexico is going to continue through this event, meaning these storms are going to have pretty much unlimited fuel to keep on going. Even if it rains and storms in your location, the southeasterly winds will simply just bring in unstable air again, not long after. So this won't be a one and done situation. This will be in a situation where things may get messy. We may not have clearly well-defined storms at times, you know, the classic supercells, but at least as we go into Monday and Monday night, I'm becoming concerned we're going to have rotating supercells in an environment that would be supportive of tornado genesis at least in portions of the risk area so we're going to have to watch things closely now things could change it, uh, if the video yesterday had actually gone out with me not sounding like elmo i would have said damaging winds and hail were the main issues since then things have trended a little more concerning in the tornado department but things can also trend less concerning we're four five six days out that'll probably trend a couple different ways between now and then but uh yeah it's gonna rain it's gonna rain a lot we're gonna be dealing with storms and you're gonna get to find out next week why i went bold in my 20s it's days like next week where sleep is going to become scarce for the weather crew and you bet your behind we're going to have storm chasers out about we'll have live severe weather coverage live storm chasing video <laughs> and uh it's a very good thing that my throat lotion supply is well stocked because things are going to get busy as they typically do in the month of april for texas let's take a look at the temperatures over the next several days uh, it goes without saying it is going to be warm uh highs today 70s 80s lower 90s uh same thing for tomorrow saturday a little cooler in the panhandle west texas the permian basin but we're also gonna have very strong winds that could result in blowing dust 
yay, plus the high to extreme fire danger. Sunday, a little cooler northwestern half of the state. That's going to be after a weak cool front moves through and kind of shunts some moisture down towards the Gulf Coast. So Sunday actually is going to be a pretty nice day probably. It will be very dry the northwestern two-thirds of the state. Highs in the 70s to low 80s. Uh, wind should be lighter compared to today and Saturday, but the fire danger will still be high. 90s Edwards Plateau Rio Grande Plains. Monday, warm front starts moving north with that tropical Gulf of Mexico moisture. Plenty of clouds across most of the state. High southeastern half to southeastern two-thirds of the state, even with cloud cover, will be in the 80s. And that is jet fuel to thunderstorms with dew points in the upper 60s and 70s. Uh, highs, 60s, 70s, Panhandle, West Texas, Borderland. Tuesday, you can see a bit cooler in the Panhandle, even with some precipitation chances, 70s to 80s to even 90s across the rest of the state. And again, you can get your local weather forecast with temperatures for your location, precipitation timing, all that. With the free Texas Storm Chasers mobile app, just search for Texas Storm Chasers, excuse me, in your device's app store or where you download apps for your device. And interactive weather radars, these daily Texas weather roundups, live storm chasing video, and live severe weather coverage. Uh, yeah, that's going to have to be a thing next week. And of course, you can visit us on the web, texasstormchasers.com. Each one of these videos, even the one that didn't go out yesterday, have written articles with some of these images uh, posted in a written format so y'all can check it out. We had one of those go out yesterday, even when the video didn't go out. So as always, you can visit us on the weather blog, texasstormchasers.com. All right, that's it. Normally, we don't do videos over the weekend. We will be this weekend because it's spring. Mother Nature wants to throw temper tantrums. And well, I already got two days, quote unquote, off this week without videos going out. So got to make up for it somehow. All right, we'll see y'all again Saturday. We'll see you. Maybe an afternoon video. It may not. Either way, y'all make it a great Friday. We'll talk to you later. God bless. Mm -hmm.